ghost And welcome back to the Supernatural Realm Radio Show with my special guest, John Zephyrus. How you doing, John? Ah, uh, doing good, buddy. How you doing? Pretty good. I'm kind of a little disappointed we weren't able to go live tonight. I don't know what the heck happened, but... Well, that's okay. As long as we got it recorded, it's still going to get out there. That's right. <laughs> Sometimes I think somebody's messing with me, but... <laughs> It's well, right, these so. spirits do have a way of playing tricks on us. Yeah. <laughs> I think they're human spirits, so. <laughs> or humans. <laughs> anyway, um, you had a um, pretty, pretty frightening experience in Joplin. Uh, I think it was this past season, wasn't it, John, on the show? Yes, uh, the jo- Joplin case was. Um, it just turned into. A type of situation where, again, um, there was so much attributing to it and the disaster alone. And then uh, dealing with the family, we had three generations that were all involved with the rescue of uh, many people and helping people. And I definitely feel that there was so much that attributed and, and tied in with that uh, circumstances of uh, dealing with a house where you have energy and a lot of old items and antiques and different things that were tying in and then having this circumstance of them having people literally dying, you know, in their arms and things that I think it really built up a lot of energy and really took its uh, toll on the entire uh, household, if you will. So, when as we were dealing with the case and realizing what so many of the family members went through and everything it was it was a an eye-opening experience to to see that three generations uh united in rescuing and helping people and even afterwards pulling together and realizing that there were other issues that were happening and tying in and during the uh, course of it, it really, um, it took its toll, I think, on each and every one of us that was involved uh, with doing that shoot. And um, one of the, the strangest things, I think, that occurred on the 24 uh, segments that we shot for the season was that when we wrapped up and everything, I sat down um, with the entire family and um, we just talked about everything and you know, got everything to hopefully help to um, bring some closure and have them talk about a few of the things that um, were probably not discussed uh, during some of those horrific events. And um, when he was sharing with me at the end that um, he was trying to save up impaled and he felt that he had lied to the gentleman telling him that everything was going to be okay. And he felt that he had let him down was a very hard thing to, um, uh, deal with for not, you know, was it so much the fact that he did something and he felt that he lied to an individual. He did, he helped him and he never even realized it that I said, you did help him because he wasn't by himself. You were there with him, and you thought everything was going to be okay. Well, we got, you know, everything um, squared away, and I had gone back to the hotel um, after we were done, and um, I wasn't feeling good. I wasn't feeling right, and it was just a strange, strange feeling, and and it was just strange because everybody was arriving back, and we were preparing to go into a meeting for our next shoot, and um, I... I just didn't feel good, and I decided to go up uh, into my room. And a couple of hours later, you know, everybody was texting, come on, John, we're doing the meeting. And I said, guys, I just don't feel good. I said, go ahead, have the meeting. I'll catch up with everybody tomorrow. And I got violently ill. I mean, it was just to a point where I couldn't comprehend it. I wasn't understanding it, and it just went on for several hours. And finally, um, I don't know, uh, 6, 7, 8 o'clock in the morning, whatever it was, 
I was fortunate enough that I still had my uh, cell phone laying on the bed and I just started hitting numbers till somebody finally answered and Chris answered and um, you know, he, he go, you know, I said, just come get my luggage. I can't carry it down the stairs. And I couldn't even remember what room I was in. Well, um, finally they were able to get a hold of somebody that knew what room I was in. And, you know, they finally uh, got somebody from security to let me in from the hotel, let them in from the hotel. And they said, it was like, you would have swore I killed somebody in the room. Um, it reached a point where I just ruptured, um, uh, vessels in my throat and everything else and it, it was just a horrific scene and I was to where I didn't even know what was going on and I ended up in the hospital and the only thing I remember Tim and it's a bizarre thing I remember uh, Chris Amy and Brian being there and the doctor coming in and just said that I was you know totally dehydrated and everything else at this point and laying my head down on that gurney and saying to myself, I don't want to die out on the road. Hmm. And, a, you know, an hour or two later, whatever it was, when I finally came uh, back around and everything, um, Amy and Chris were uh, still there. And I just thought about that. And that's something that bothers me to this day that, you know, was this somehow tying in with all of the events? I don't know. We still don't know exactly what happened. They were trying to figure out if I caught the flu, if I had food poisoning. Was it a combination of all of these things that occurred and happened? But to this day, it still bothers me because it was the fact that was I was something reenacting something was something trying to get something across to me of uh, one of those dev devastating events that took place that day in Joplin. I don't know. I, I still don't know. Was that was were you there after the tornadoes went through? Well, did, yeah, this did, this was after our investigation of the family, and um, you know the tornadoes were a year and a half prior, I believe, or whatever the exact time framing was. I don't remember, but was it here again a situation where some of that residual energy was tying in with them, and by him speaking and several of the other family members? telling me some of the horrific events, was it some type of emotion that was attaching itself to me and it, it, it could have possibly affected me? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I still don't know. Did the, Probably did never the, will know. Right. Did the, um, did the doctors ever come to any conclusion of what might have happened or might would have, you know, what was wrong? Did you no, that, that? that's what I was saying, Tim. They didn't know if it was food poisoning, if I caught some kind of crazy virus. They, they weren't quite sure about anything at that point. The only thing they were concerned with when I was in there is that, you know, as I was, you know, um, vomiting, it, it, it turned into pure blood. Hmm. So that, that was the main concern at that point in time. So, yeah, it almost, it almost sounds like, you know, something, some energy or some emotion attached itself to you. We don't know. I, uh, again, I don't know. I don't understand it, but again, it was something that I've experienced that I never did before. And I can't rule anything out with the whole thing because somebody else even um, on uh, set, uh, a couple, uh, actually two different people on set were having just bizarre experiences the same night that didn't even believe in the paranormal. They, you know, they just, you know, were there filming and uh, doing their jobs and things. And um, they were having some pretty bizarre experiences the same evening. I know, you know, some of those, I've, I've found out that, you know, some of those cases that, that involve family members, they can be pretty, pretty emotional at times, especially if, you know, you're investigating and, and one of your members who was sensitive starts crying and gets, you know, starts getting emotional. It can be pretty, uh, pretty emotional at times. Well, it's a lot of, it, uh, again, too, when the emotion kicks in and everything, it's very highly charged. That's a lot of energy and Again, throwing off that amount of energy from anybody, uh, you know, that's tying in with the whole thing to definitely cause things to escalate and cause things to happen. Yeah, you can't help it sometimes get emotionally involved with a case, uh, you know, something like that. Well, you have to be very careful with that. Um, again, it's something I've learned uh, many years ago. You have to learn to separate yourself from your investigations when you 
get personally too personally involved it will affect you and it's going to affect your environment so you got to be very careful yeah that's that's happened to me a few times that's why i kind of had to step back from the and you know doing doing investigations for that reason until i get you know grounded and uh you know and trying to you know not get involved with with the you know in individual cases like that mm -hmm. again too it's a human emotion we've all done it we've all been there but again it's something that you learn uh being involved with this and everything that uh you have to take that step back and realize you know once you're personally being affected emotionally psychologically or anything you got to take that step back mm -hmm. set your boundaries so to speak yeah are there any events that you're going to be going to uh here in, in the near future well, uh, working on a couple of different things um, in the uh, vicinity where you are, buddy. Um, nothing's pulled together yet. Hopefully something will pull together. We'll be able to announce it. I uh, just did the Fort Mifflin one. Um, I'll be doing a couple of uh, casinos up in uh, the Missouri area. I mean, uh, quite a few things going on at this point in time. And um, unfortunately, I scaled back this year. I'm not doing as many events that I usually do because... Be perfectly honest with you, I'm just plain tired. <laughs> so I've been limiting the uh, uh, amount of things that I've been getting involved with this year and uh, just uh, resting up. Are you going to be getting your museum opened up here pretty soon? or? That's been one of my major uh, projects that I've been working on is uh, resetting it up and organizing it and uh, trying to make it uh, visitor friendly and it will not be open to the general public. Uh, you know, I live in a residential area, so that's a very difficult thing to do. Mm -hmm. But it will start, um, I'm hoping, by next month to be able to do small, tiny events, uh, tying in with lecturing and then doing a museum tour. And, uh, you know, like I said, I want to keep it very small, very intimate. I'm not really interested in doing any type of big uh type thing here at my home <laughs> uh, so it's it's still at the same location then right yeah at this point in time it is yeah i'm still looking um i gotta find that uh perfect piece of property where i'll be able to house it and um be able to get it opened up to the general public I, i'd love to do that but you know again it, it's hard because it's a very costly thing mm -hmm. um especially up here in uh the uh, Connecticut area properties extremely high taxes are high and looking at it at the end of the day I found a couple of pieces of property but it would end up costing me thousands of dollars a month just to maintain it and that's going to defeat the purpose you have quite a few years of items there in, in 40, 40 years worth buddy wow and your 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 aunt and uncle also have one a museum. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, Lorraine still maintains uh, the museum that her and Ed uh, had set up, and um, they have many of the items that they've removed from cases over the years, and there's Lorraine still does her uh, little uh, uh, things, the little museum tours and uh, hers and her little uh, lectures and things, and at 86, she's still rocking and rolling, and God bless her. She's still doing events, too. I don't think she does too many. I'm not. I'm not quite sure. I'm not sure if she's I, still I, doing any or not at this point. I think she was at Slippery Rock a couple of years back. I don't know if it was last year or the year before. Mm -hmm. She was at the university. Yeah, I I know she. Uh, this past fall, she still did a few. So. Wow, she still gets around pretty good, though, huh? No, nah, she sure does. <laughs> are you Are you involved in that new movie that's coming out at all? No, that's The Conjuring. Um, uh, I've seen a few clips here and there over it, and um, that's the earlier uh, part of Ed and Lorraine's life, of their career, and um, it looks pretty good. It looks, you know, very well put together, and um, I hope uh, a lot of success, and hopefully a lot of people will go out to see it. Um, unfortunately, you know, I wish Ed was around still to finally see it because that was one of his dreams to get a movie out there of his uh, life story. Oh, really? Wow. I'm sure he probably does know about it, though. <laughs> oh, knowing my uncle, yeah. <laughs>
I'm sure he's pretty happy with it too. <laughs> it would be it would be great to meet your aunt sometime. Well, like I said, uh, I know she uh, still does things here in the uh, Connecticut area, some of the schools and things around here. And, um, you know, hopefully uh, that happens, buddy. Get the yeah, opportunity to. It'd be great to finally meet you, too. <laughs> I know. Well, we'll, we'll see what happens. And that might not be in the uh, long distant future there, so to speak. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be great. I'd, I'd really like that. We'll definitely see what we can do. Okay, cool. What are some of the other um, cases that you can remember while being on a set that that, that stick out? Oh gosh, all of them. There there isn't anything that really doesn't because, again, they're all very uh, unique and uh, interesting things that uh, tie in with uh, most of the investigations. Um, uh, Jordan Springs from. Uh, season two was another one that was very profound and uh, a very spiritual uh, type environment that uh, so much tied in with. We brought in a shaman and he did in, uh, a full ritual and everything there right on the property um, with the item. We just found out that it tied in with a lot of cursing and so many other different things. I mean, th there's so many of them that are intriguing and interesting. I mean, the... Uh, going to any of the old hospitals or the asylums and different things like that are always intriguing and uh, very interesting finding results and finding out what you could do with it. And um, a lot of the personal uh, cases, you know, home cases that we've done where we're able to bring some information to the forefront to be able to help and, uh, you know, bring some of that negative energy uh, to a close. Cause that to me is what it's all about. And it's very important if, uh, you can help, you know, in any way, shape or form to help, you know, calm down or be able to help a particular spirit to be able to cross over or alleviate some of the negative energy and, and educate the individuals in these homes. You know, that helps a lot. That helps a lot with a, a lot of the cases, each and every one of them. You know, we did 60, you know, segments so far and each and every one of them is something personal or something that tied in with something with uh, uh, being able to help individuals. And to me, that's important. There's many of the cases, even after we leave, I still put these people in touch with people in the, lo in the locations where somebody else has to come in and do something else, whether it be from a spiritual perspective or a clergy perspective, or just, you know, bringing someone else into investigate to see if there's something else that they can find out to me that's important and i always i always try to do what i can mm -hmm. that's what i that's what i tell my members and i tell even cl my clients that i that i visit you know i always tell them there's no there's no case that's the same they're all they're all unique and they're all different they all have you know different things going on or different stories to tell always and you know again there's a lot of similarities, you know, that that's a given. I mean, that just happens. And uh, when trying to figure anything out, how to be able to resolve just a, a piece of a haunting, it, to me, is uh, something that's uh, very important. I mean, you know, again, too, a lot of people have to understand when um, any of us go out on any of the TV shows out there and we're doing a historical location or... Um, you know, something that um, ties in with paranormal activity that's been going on for years and everything. You know, we go in and uh, we do what we can to, if they have something on a negative level, to try and get some of that to calm down. Uh, a lot of these places do ghost tours and sleep with the ghosts or different things like that. And, you know, the intent is just to be able to, you know, bring the story to the forefront and help to give some of those locations you know, some recognition. So to me, you know, it's looked at from uh, different ways that we do the TV shows that are out there doing a uh, commercial piece of property in versus to doing a residential piece of property. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the um, the commercial ones are very are very different. I've, I've, yes, I've they are, them. and they're they're handled a lot differently. And um, you know, like I said, the intent is to go in and 
you know, try to substantiate some of the different stories and some of the things that people have experienced in there. To me, that's important. And when you can walk away with some results on what people have encountered in there, that helps them to understand, wow, you know, I did have uh, something occur. I did have something that happened to me. And, you know, they came in and they were able to verify it. Mm -hmm. How do you think you know, these paid sites stay active uh, in a paranormal sense? Well, uh, what do you mean? As far as what, Tim? Um, as far as the teams going in there, um, how, how do they, I just, you know, how, how do they stay active? I mean, well, okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, one thing. You, you there, John? John, you there? Stand by, everybody. Okay, okay, hopefully we're back there. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, all right, uh, to answer uh, the question that you had asked, one thing that you have to always remember, um, with commercial pieces of property, restaurants, hotels, inns, whatever they are, you know, they do ghost hunts in them, um, they do paranormal investigating, and different things in them. You always got to remember, again, energy is going to be activated by different people coming in. You're going to have activity continuing. So that that is not an unusual. It's something that's always been that way. That's why a lot of times when uh, it, it's a difficult situation and people trying to understand, well, you know, why is it still haunted or why do they still have the activity? You know, due to the law of attraction and recognition, these places are still always going to have paranormal activity. And today, it's more of a, 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 a an acceptance. We accept it more than we ever did in the past, and people look forward to going to these types of locations to do mini investigations or, you know, to do overnight investigations to check them out. Mm -hmm. I, I, I know with, you know, the private investigations, you know, you're, you're always trying to find closure with, you know, helping spirits move on and, and, and help move, you know, bring, bring some closure to the client as well. But when you do the, the commercial places, you really, you really can't do that. Well, you, there are circumstances where certain spirit, because you got to remember, spirit attracts spirit. Mm -hmm. So you always will have multiple of uh, energies going on in these locations. And sometimes, you know, that's what I get involved with on some of the episodes where that some more of that negative type energy can be associated, can get, you know, brought in. And you try to bring closure with that part of it and try to, you know, at least help some of that negative energy get broken so that, you know, uh, these situations could uh, move forward with uh, their paranormal things that they have going on in them. Mm -hmm. um, when you remove an item from a location, John, does that, does that uh, in, in some cases or most cases, calm down? The activity in the home most of the situations yes that's what the intent and purpose of doing the item removal that's why in some of the episodes I leave an item on the property or we bind the item right there on the property but there's other situations where the item does need to be removed and it is because I want the item trust me I have a thousand items I don't need any more right <laughs> You know, again, it's depending on the circumstances, depending on what's happening. And I'm a very firm believer if you're dealing with a home environment and you have children and, and you know, people living in that environment, you need that activity to be broken. And I always will make a recommendation 
in a residential case, in a home environment, that those items should be removed. Because if you leave them there and you bind them there, people are going to touch them. People aren't going to leave the circumstances alone. So again, that's why one of the key elements with a home where people are living in it, I always make that recommendation, you know, here again, that it's something that should be removed to try and break some of it. And again, it's step by step with any type of investigation that we do, the process of moving forward. You've got to make that step to actually start to break a bit, break the activity that's occurring and happening. I noticed in every episode, you always ask the client, you know, what they want to do with this item. Mm -hmm. But yet, but yet you, you know, have people say that, you know, you're taking somebody's items or you're taking property or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, I, you know. again, too, you know, um, I look at it from two perspectives. Um, people don't understand what's going on. They, you know, are like, I'm trying to talk these people into, you know, removing the item. Like I said, I don't need to do that. I don't need any more items. But people jump to conclusions on behalf of people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's something that they don't quite understand. And they're speaking on behalf of these people when they don't even know the circumstances, know the case, or know the people. So, um, you know, I see these postings out there, Tim, just like everybody else does. And I'll sit there and read them and go, you don't even know what was going on. You don't know what the circumstances were that we're dealing with in these episodes, but you turn around and make these postings on behalf of people that you don't know or know all of what is going on with that investigation. So again, you know, that that's one of the downfalls to the internet today that uh, people can just go out there and post things and um, say things and not really have all of the facts before posting something. And I think too the you know you're you're there what two or three days at a location doing Usually investigation. Usually five days. Five days. Wow. And they try to fit that in in what a thirty minute you know segment. Twenty two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so there's going to be a lot of critical critical you know segments taken out. That's what they don't realize. Well, that that's why I talk about it so openly so people can understand it. You know, again, um, there's so much that, that gets edited out, and I understand it. Uh, you only have that 22 minutes to get the, the, the story in there. So a lot of explanations, a lot of the things that I say, a lot of the things that I do just don't end up making it into that final cut. And, you know, being behind the scenes the third season and understanding it and, and figuring things out on why things get done the way they do. I have a better understanding of it now, but you know, like I said, it's unfortunate that, you know, people have to realize you're watching TV shows and a lot of things don't make it in there and it gets confusing and it does. That, that's why I, I speak so much about what I know now and what I understand that, you know, Hey, a lot got cut out. You know, there's a lot that people aren't going to understand. They're watching that episode and going, gee, it looks like he's just taking the item and he's walking away. No, there's a lot more that goes on behind the scenes with uh, these episodes than, unfortunately, actually airs. Mm -hmm. Do you have any input or any say on what goes on in an episode and what, what gets taken out? Well, uh, um, uh, again, we deal a lot with... Um, so much, Tim, that it's a machine. I call it the machine. Okay. And the reason I call it that is because you have to deal with so many avenues behind the scenes on what can get said, what can't get said. You know, we, and I try to, uh, again, it's not like being in our paranormal groups. I get a telephone call, an email. We get together. We go investigate. We're filming and we do a lot. There's a lot more that has to go on when you're doing a TV show as far as legal ends and, and sponsors and networks and executives. There's so much more that goes on behind the scenes that you, you have to work with. So, again, you know, um, uh, dealing with some of that and understanding some of that, I, I look at it differently. Um, again, there's been a lot more lead way with getting things in there so that people can understand it 
so that it doesn't offend somebody and everybody doesn't get upset. There, there, there's been a little bit more leadway this season. Mm -hmm. I'm sure, you know, pay, or client confidentiality plays a big part in that as well. Well, no, that, that, that really doesn't. It, it has a lot more to do with your legalities and things like that. Okay. Well, there's a lot that goes into producing the show, isn't there? A lot, a lot to there's an uh, awful lot that goes into it, Tim, an awful lot. I mean, yeah, uh, again, um, you know, you can't just show up with a film crew and just start filming on a piece of property. There's, you know, uh, so many things that have to be put into play before we even go on to a piece of property from many angles and from a legal perspective and from a networking perspective, from a production perspective. There's a lot that goes into these episodes before we can actually go there and film. Hmm. Well, do you have a question, Mom? Oh. My mom just walked in the room here. I thought she had a question for you. <laughs> She's got to have something. Yes, I told her. You want it? She's like, no, no, no. I think she's, <laughs> I think she's shy, John. <laughs> You can't like, like I said, Tim, there, there's just a awful lot. And, you know, I didn't understand a lot of things until I got involved behind the scenes with uh, so much of it. We're trying to understand things because I'm like that. I like to know why the certain things are the way they are or why we have to do something a certain way or why I can't say something. And I was very, very fortunate this season where... You know, I got behind the scenes and I, and I was able to know and understand a lot of it because it made a lot more sense to me. Mm -hmm. I'm sure, I'm sure too, you know, the more you do it, the more you understand. As far when as when you on. get it, when you get involved and you're doing something and um, you're trying to understand it, whether uh, anything, I think in life, you know, it's very important to get in there to figure out why. Just like investigating, producing is the same thing. Who, where, what, when, you know, all these things are crucial elements to uh, being able to put any type of show together. And um, like I said, that, that to me was a very important element to understanding things. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like doing a radio show, but at a much smaller scale. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same thing. Yeah, you know, again, yeah. You have to deal with the network that uh, you're affiliated with and people that you're affiliated with. And, you know, again, you, you try to do things so people can understand them and uh, people can relate to them without, you know, getting everybody offended and, you know, getting people upset. And, uh, you know, it, it's a very difficult thing. And, mm -hmm. you know, you learn these elements as you're going along with a lot of it. Right. I think we're going to end the show here, John. I, it was a great great talking to you uh, well i appreciate it i'm glad i was finally able to uh get on buddy and um i look forward to hearing it okay maybe we will have to have you back on on a live show here sometime well we'll see what we can do all right buddy <laughs> all right buddy you take care and tell your mom i said bye i will it was nice talking to you john okay same here thank you bye-bye <laughs> bye-bye